Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I've decided that uh, each week I'm going to do one longer Come Follow Me video, probably around 30 to 45 minutes long, and a shorter video for uh, those who can't stand to listen to my voice that long or who would just rather listen to maybe like a 5 to 10 minute spiritual thought. Um, so yeah, so this will be kind of my favorite takeaway from this week's Come Follow Me lesson in Mosiah's chapter 1 through 3. So the, my favorite thing that I kind of discovered in my personal studies this week was um, in chapter 2, verses 11 through 19. It's where Benjamin really gets into the beginning of his discourse. And he starts describing the kind of leader and servant that he has been to the Nephites. And it was kind of cool as I studied it this week, I was underlining things and I started thinking, you know, I think the spirit whispered to me that Benjamin was a type for Christ and that the kind of servant and king and leader that Benjamin was is a type for the kind of king and servant that Christ eventually would be and is. So I just want to go through those verses with you and kind of share what I learned. So starting in verse 11, he says, But I am like yourselves, subject to all manner of infirmities in body and mind, and yet I have been chosen by this people, and consecrated by my Father, and was suffered by the hand of the Lord, that I should be a ruler and a king. So right off the bat, we start seeing these similarities between, you know, the characteristics of Benjamin and the type of person that Christ is. So he says, I, I am like as yourselves, subject to all manner of infirmities in body and mind. And we know that part of the condescension of Jesus Christ was his willingness to experience mortality the way that we experience it. That he was, you know, he was subject to sickness in, in body and mind, just like the rest of us. And he follows that up with, yet I have been chosen by this people. And to me, that reminds me of, you know, pre-mortality and the covenants that we would have made with Christ, that we would, you know, have him be our savior and the covenants that he made with us that he would go through with what he said he would do. And consecrated by my father, obviously Christ was anointed and God's only begotten son and, and he was definitely consecrated by his father and suffered that he should be a ruler and a king over his people. And con continuing on in verse 12, that Benjamin suffered to spend all his days in your service. Obviously, Christ spent his whole life in our service. Verse 13, Neither have I suffered that ye should be confined in dungeons. Uh, I like that, that thought as we relay that to Christ, that, I mean, we just suffered, uh, excuse me, we just um, celebrated Easter weekend and what was on everyone's minds and hearts is the idea that Christ was resurrected and that we will all have that, that gift of receiving our bodies again and, and that we don't have to be confined to that dungeon that is the tomb. And if we will keep Christ's commandments that none of us are confined in spiritual dungeons as well. Um, and then my favorite verse with this connection I made was verse 14. It says, And even I myself have labored with mine own hands that I might serve you. So we have this idea of, of our hands and that they equate work. When we think of our hands, we think of all the, the work that we're able to accomplish with them. And Christ forever has upon his hands, the testimony of the work that he did for us. And he will forever be able to show us his hands and show that, that his work was accomplished and that he labored for us. And he chose to keep those reminders in his hands. So I, I love to think of that, that, that he labored with his hands. And uh, in verse 15, 
Yet, my brethren, I have not done these things that I might boast. Neither do I tell you these things, that there might, thereby I might accuse you. So I, I think this goes back to premortality as well. When we think of, of Christ and, and Lucifer, obviously Lucifer's plan was that he would have all the glory and he would not lose a single soul. And Christ accepted the Father's plan and said that he didn't want the glory, but all glory would go to the Father. So just like Benjamin says that he didn't do all these things that he might boast, neither did Christ. Christ was totally obedient, but not to be better than us, but to give all glory back to the Father and point us back to the Father. And the part where he says that I might that he didn't do it, that I might accuse you. Christ is the total opposite of an accuser. He's the adver the advocate with the Father, and he's the one that pleads our cause, whereas the adversary or Lucifer, that's another name for the devil, is to be an accuser. You know, he's the one that, that wishes to accuse us of, of all of our wrongs. And then verse 17, a very familiar verse that we all know, Behold, I tell you these things, that ye may learn wisdom, that ye may learn that when ye are in the service of your fellow beings, ye are only in the service of your God. And the more that I read this verse, the more inspired I realize it, it that it must have been, because there's no verse of Scripture that could be any more Christ-centered and Christ-centric and Christian than this verse. Because who better than Christ, as in all things, he is the perfect example of this, this principle. That when you are in the service of your fellow beings, you are only in the service of your God. Christ's atonement literally was the ultimate example of this principle. That he was in all of our service and had each one of us in mind as he as he went through that that suffering and onto the cross and his eventual resurrection, it was all for the service of other people. Yet he was only in the service of his God and his Father. And Benjamin seems to understand that all of these things allude to Christ as well, because he wraps it up in verse 18 and 19 by saying, Behold, ye have called me your king, and if... If, whom ye, if I, whom ye call your king, do labor to serve you, then ought not ye to labor to serve one another. And behold, if I, whom ye call your king, who has spent his days in your service, do merit any thanks from you, oh, how you ought to thank your heavenly king. So I was grateful this week to have the Spirit teach me that lesson that that Benjamin, yes, he was a great king, he was a great leader, he was a great servant of the Lord, and he was a wonderful type and foreshadowing of Christ, our heavenly king, and our servant, because he really did serve us. His whole life was spent in our service. And I just thought that was a really awesome insight into Mosiah chapter 2. So thanks for listening.